Welcome to To Life L'Chaim. On today's episode, we'll talk about a controversial music video created by a Miami plastic surgeon called the Nose Job Video. And first up, we'll talk about some delicious treats with Remy's Rogelach in our Eye on Jewish Business segment, right after these messages. Today we're going to be speaking to Dr. Michael Saltzhauer, who is a well-known South Florida plastic surgeon who has recently sparked a great debate in the Jewish community and among plastic surgeons with a video known as Jucan Sam that was meant to be a parody and a comedy about the issue of nose jobs. We're bringing you this story today because of its great relevancy and because also we believe that we should have a sense of humor. Uh, Jews have through the years made fun of themselves and found that humor was the best way to argue and combat stereotypes. Doctor, I want to thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. And uh, you have been at the center of the storm yeah. lately, to say the least. Well, Our audience is shortly going to see the video in its entirety, but just set it up. How did you come up with the idea, and why did you want to do it? Well, first of all, let me just say I agree with everything you just said about self-deprecating humor in the Jewish community. I think it's been a hallmark of our people for a long time. Um, the idea for the video actually evolved quite organically. Uh, first, I had found out about this Jewish Orthodox punk rock band called the Groggers in New York on YouTube through a friend of mine. Um, and I had been toying with the idea of getting a song written about nose jobs for use on commercials and radio commercials and television commercials down here in South Florida, because that's my specialty, nose jobs. I love rhinoplasty. Um, so I called up the lead singer, Ellie Stamen, uh, and I said, hey, you know, I loved your videos, they're funny, and the tunes are catchy, would you write me a theme song to use in my commercials for my practice? He said, let me think about it. Came back to me the next day, he said, sure, pay me some money, I'll write you a song. So I did that, and then he came back literally within a week with this great catchy tune, I thought it was very funny, um, and in the course of that conversation, he said, you know, it's ironic that you asked us of all bands to write this song because we all have these big, beautiful Jewish noses. We can certainly use some work. Do you guys have group rates for rhinoplasty? Um, and we joked back and forth. Um, but in the end of the day, he was serious about getting his nose done. So I said, you know, well, if you come down to Miami, maybe we'll shoot a video and we'll incorporate your surgery into the video and we'll make it fun. Um, and uh, it just so happened that the director of their previous videos had relocated to South Florida, Farrell Goldsmith of Yeovil Productions. And, uh, and I called him up, and before you knew it, they had this script. Uh, I gave them complete creative control over it, as I did over the lyrics and the title of the song, which is what's generated a lot of controversy lately. What um, is the official title of the video? Well, you know, my, my official title was A Nose Job Love Song. Uh, but, uh, you know, since I did agree that this was going to be a Grogger song included on their album, uh, you know, they ultimately ended up with Jucan Sam, which is one of the, wor one of the uh, uh, you know, uh, interesting lyrics, uh, more creative lyrics in the song itself. So the final t title is Jucan Sam, parentheses, a nose job love song. Um, so we, came, they, 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 we flew the band down and we shot half the video the night before his rhinoplasty for his nose job and the other half six days later. I would have liked to have shot it, you know, two or three weeks later when the swelling was gone, but he had to go back to New York. So uh, that's how we did the video. Great. We are going to let our audience now see the video in its entirety, and we will be right back after the video to begin our discussion. Like you can't Sam, she says I, I 
Just like the way you train. Just like the way you train. Perfect. So, what do you think? Uh, yeah. I also only date football players. Babe, finish my math homework? <laughs> yeah, babe. Oh, sorry, Miss Bernstein. Duck? Yeah. You look older. <laughs> Thanks. Call me. What? Friends, as you see here at JLTV, we take this video very seriously and understand why it's been a source of such controversy. Doctor, before we go on break, is there anything you can do with us? Sure. Come to the office Monday. Friends, we'll be right back to discuss the video. <music> Doctor, I think by now our audience sees that you and I are on the same page. That the video, the song, was meant to be a parody. Yeah, it absolutely. Is, yeah, it's self-deprecating, tongue-in-cheek, uh, classic Jewish humor. Do you have any inkling, because I don't, why people have taken this so seriously? People have called this offensive, stereotyping, degrading, and worst of all, as our audience may know from seeing national news repeatedly, you were under an ethics investigation by the American plastic surgeons for offending the dignity. Well, I'm pretty sure the dignity of our profession was degraded right around Joan Rivers' 14th or 15th facelift. Good uh, point. Um, you, know, you know, it's hard for me to apologize for having a sense of humor. I mean, this is clearly meant as a parody. Um, and I think the vast majority of the viewing public, uh, if you look at the comments underneath the video on the Huffington Post, it's about nine to one of the people, you know, nine to one in favor of the video. Most people get the joke here. Um, all the characters uh, and, of course, all the band members, myself and the director, are Orthodox Jews. Um, very Orthodox Jews, actually. I go to synagogue seven days a week. I'm married for 17 and a half years, have five children. So the thought that this would be in any way intended to be offensive towards Jews or Judaism uh, is, really doesn't make sense. I mean, if you watch this video and you laugh, then, you know, I'm happy. Well, I, I think that one of the things, you know, in this politically correct world, it's the message is that we're no longer allowed to make fun of ourselves. And as everybody knows, you look at Mel Brooks, uh, Woody Allen, uh, every Jewish entertainer, Jackie Mason, everybody, they've made their mark by making fun of Jewish life and Jews laugh about it. Right, and I think, you know, the Jewish nose and Jewish nose jobs is part of Jewish culture today in America, and I don't think there's any reason why we can't make fun of ourselves. Now, one of the particularly uh, uh, harsh, I mean, I, I can't even put a word on it because I don't understand it, you've been accused of profiting or trafficking in the frailty of the human condition. I'm pretty sure that uh, plastic surgery in general uh, caters to the frailties of the human condition, not to uh, profit, but to alleviate the frailties of the human condition. I myself had a rhinoplasty when I was younger. I could tell. You got a beautiful nose. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brian Boyd did this one in L.A. Uh, anyway, um, so I'm, when I was younger, I had a big nose, and I was, mocked, I was actually called Toucan Sam at one point in my life during college, you know, and I laughed it off, but it did affect me, um, and I always wanted to get my nose fixed. Eventually, I did. Um, and I eventually went into the specialty to help other people do the same thing. Now, it doesn't solve all your problems. And if you watch the video, he doesn't get the girl in the end. Right. You know, and that's one of the messages of the video is don't have plastic surgery to get the girl or guy because that never works out. You get plastic surgery to please yourself and to make your own self-esteem better. And that's what our specialty is all about. So, yeah, it was kind of an ironic comment there. Well, I know you mentioned before the band, the Groggers. Yeah. Uh, they are a great parody band, and I, I spoke to them at, at this point. 
The video has already had over 120,000 views on YouTube, and of course all the controversy just makes people log on. Sure. But uh, if there's any, you know, enduring lesson, if you had it to do over again, would you do it? Well, um, you know, controversy is not something that you necessarily invite as a physician. Um, but I think a lot of people laughed at it and uh, took it in the spirit it was intended, and I'm happy for that. And I did make three rhinoplasty consultations this morning, and it's only 11 o'clock, so well, it's why, good. why do you think other people have taken it seriously or I, spoken out against it? I think it's what you said. I think we've become a little bit too politically correct, a little bit too hypersensitive in general about making fun of ourselves. Um, but I think that's what life is all about. I think laughter is the best medicine. I, I believe, too, that if this makes fun of a stereotype, and challenges it, all the, that's so much better right. than right. living with it silently. Right. Exactly, exactly. And, and hopefully this will open a discussion and lessen the, lessen the stigma that's attached to a procedure that's so commonly performed but still has you know, some, uh, somewhat of a stigma attached to it. So if people talk about it a little bit more, I think that's great. And you know, we made a point in the video that it's the guy that's changing for the girl, which is also something that's unusual. Most plastic surgery is done on women, so we kind of flipped that around a little bit. And uh, as you noted, ultimately he doesn't get the girl. He doesn't get the girl. It's a very superficial correction and that, it doesn't help him out at all. That's right. So don't have plastic surgery to get, you know, get the boy or girl of your dreams. That's not going to happen. Right. Work on yourself. Uh, doctor, I, I understand that you've written a children's book. And tell me a little bit about that and what you had in mind with the book. Sure. Well, yeah, about uh, you know four or five years ago, um, I uh, had this idea uh, for a children's book. And what inspired it was after my own rhinoplasty, I came home. My daughter was about four years old at the time. I had all these bandages on. And I, my eyes were black and blue swollen. And I hadn't quite explained to my children what daddy was doing and why. Um, when I came home and walked in the door, she started crying and, and screaming, what happened to daddy? So it occurred to me it would be good to have a, a book or a way at least to explain to your kids uh, what plastic surgery is all about and what to expect when mommy, because most, most plastic surgery of that is, is done on women, uh, when mommy has her tummy tuck or her rhinoplasty so that the kids aren't that scared uh, when they see mommy come home in bandages. I mean, most children think about you know, uh, doctors and hospitals and surgery and they associate that with illness or death even. Um, so it does scare them. Uh, so again, we, I wrote a children's book, uh, you know, for use in my practice with my own patients, uh, you know, so they could explain the process to their own children before they had their surgery. Great. Doctor, I want to thank you for being here today and sharing some laughs with us, but I also want to wish you well because uh, people have taken this far too seriously and created, you know, what are obviously problems for you. And I want to encourage our listeners to be supportive, uh, to realize that uh, you're actually sending a positive message. Thank you. That, first of all, it's good to laugh. Yep. It's good to laugh at yourself. Yep. And it's good to break down stereotypes yep. through laughter. Thank you. With God's help, it'll all be okay. Very good. I want to thank you for being here. Keep up you're the welcome. good work. You too. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's it for this edition. Don't forget to visit our Facebook page for all the latest news about our program. I'm Lee Lazerson. Thanks for joining us on To Life L'Chaim. <laughs>